We've got Hurricane Sandy currently hitting a broad swath of the U.S. East Coast, bringing strong winds and drenching rains. And while the ultimate economic impact is unknown, some traders may be poised to benefit from making the correct bets on weather derivatives. Let's find out how they work. Don Sears, an associate professor and dean with the Goodman School of Business at Brock University, and he joins us in studio. Good to have you come in. Thank you, Michael. You might have to boat back <laughs> That's uh, after true. you're joining us here. And, and the, the Goodman School, this is a new name for you, is it not? It is. We were the faculty of business at Brock University before, and thanks to a uh, very generous transformational gift from the Goodman Foundation, Ned Goodman, of course, mm -hmm. of Dundee Wealth Management, is also the chancellor at Brock University, and now we're the uh, Goodman School of Business. We're looking forward to doing some great things in management, education, and research. So as Ned Goodman put some skin in the game, as, as it were, tell me about the skin that's in the game of weather derivatives today. I, I can't imagine that anyone would want to buy a weather derivative today based on Sandy. I guess the time would have been earlier in the week or last week. It, it would have been earlier. Uh, this type of weather event has uh, uh, a risk that involves two aspects in which things can be managed. In terms of the damage that something like a hurricane will cause, uh, is best handled, of course, through insurance. Weather derivatives are more useful for more systemic uh, weather risks. So the fact that we will have, of course, heavier rainfall over the next day or two, and we've been having some heavy rainfall, that ends up into, let's say, a cumulative me measure of the monthly rainfall for, uh, uh, for the month or for the season. And that's the sort of thing that weather derivatives are useful for hedging against. And to my point, uh, and to yours as well, the idea that uh, insurance is the best protection against an event like this. Weather derivatives, by and large, are insurance as well. I, I understand you know, anything from a, a wedding to a, a large fair, they may uh, use weather derivatives. But traders are using them as trading vehicles as opposed to protection? Well, the weather derivatives are different from weather insurance. Insurance, mm -hmm. of course, has the proof of uh, damage that comes with it in the adjuster process. And so, in a sense, weather insurance is, is a little more costlier than weather derivatives. But weather derivatives may not be a perfect hedge against um, a lost revenue or a cost that you might be having, but they will be of a lower cost. They are, in a sense, a bet against a weather variable such as cumulative rainfall, mm -hmm. uh, temperature, uh, on just about any weather variable that you can measure at a weather station that is uh, not impacted by both parties, so Environment Canada's weather stations. Yeah, we were speaking over the course of the summer with the general manager of the Canadian National Exhibition and he was pointing out that the big issue that he's dealing with is, is that he can't buy weather derivatives because they're too expensive because they don't have the rainfall on an hourly basis and you can't get that that fine-tuned in, in many respects. How big is this industry though? Well it's certainly growing. It started out in about 1996 one of the first weather contracts was uh, uh, the now infamous Enron Corporation. We've got one thing to thank them for. And <laughs> One thing to thank them for. Um, I think the growth in the market took a dip after 2008. Just a lot of uncertainty around derivative securities in general. But it's been building back up uh, since then. It's a lot more players. There's uh, uh, financial intermediaries, they're standing ready to offer uh, a weather contract in the over-the-counter market of any size, really. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which trades contracts. Largely, the players in there are your large uh, energy firms. Uh, weather Bill, I, I, they've changed their name recently. Yeah, they've changed the Climate Corporation. Yeah. That was an innovative uh, online, uh, still in existence, of course, corporation out of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Uh, the founder of that uh, company got the idea on his way to work seeing a, uh, a bicycle rental shop that if it was raining, might as well close its doors. Sure. And uh, so they offer uh, weather contracts on just about every size. Is this the kind of thing that, that a, an average retail investor can get involved in? Can I just pick up the phone and call my guy? Uh, you, you can't really. You'd have to be doing with the financial intermediaries such as uh, Climate Corporation, MSI Guaranteed Weather. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, of course, you could trade on those, but they have very standardized contracts based on certain cities, largely in the U.S., although quite a number of in, in Canada as well, uh, for certain weather variables, particularly temperature. Um, in the hedge fund market, there has been an interest in weather derivatives because adding them into a well-balanced or already diversified portfolio 
adds additional diversification because a weather contract written, let's say, on a specific weather variable for Toronto, mm -hmm. although weather affects our economy uh, very significantly, about 30% of gross domestic product is affected by weather at the very least. Mm. Um, a specific weather variable like that is going to have a low correlation with a general market index, and so there you get the added diversification. What kind of returns can one expect if they dabble in the derivatives market with weather? Well, uh, the con you know, weather is pretty hard to predict. Uh, uh, Everyone complains about it, but nobody does anything about it. <laughs> you know, meteorologists probably have at best a two-week uh, window of forecasting, and past that, it's pretty much anybody's guess. So. Uh, for you to earn abnormal returns mm -hmm. uh, through superior information, unlike, let's say, in the case of the stock market, uh, is very unlikely. I know that the, the farming industry uses weather derivatives, but is this Farmer Brown outstanding in his field, or is this the large corporate farms that are uh, It's both, but interestingly enough, a, a recent survey by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange of um, CFOs and CEOs in both uh, Canada and the U.S. found that agriculture, interestingly enough, was one of the lower usages. Mm. It's more in its growth is largely in the on the retail side. Um, uh, some of the examples we uh, talked about. Uh, one of the first over-the-counter contracts was also a um, a British uh, restaurant that uh, chain that uh, specialized in outdoor dining. Mm. And so they bought weather contracts to hedge against cool summer uh, temperatures. Well, Don, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for bringing your insight. Thank you, Michael. Don Sear, Associate Professor and Dean with the Goodman School of Business at Brock University.